Hi, welcome to another episode of WCM Supplier Showcase, and I am chatting here with John Tuyo. Um, and I guess, John, just tell us your title. You're with Skyline Champion. I guess, what's your title? I am the Director of Park Models and Cabins for Champion Homes. All right, yeah. And um, you guys have a number of different brands, I believe, like Champion, Ath Athens Park, I guess. What are the brands of park models you guys offer? Sure. Our, our main umbrella is Champion Park Models and Cabins. And then yeah. underneath there, we have Athens Park and Shore Park. Okay, yeah. And what's the difference between like an Athens or a Shore Park park model? It just depended on when we... Um, acquired a plant skyline is preliminary uh, preliminary uh plans were all shore park so we kept shore park for our skyline true plants and then our champion plants are athens park okay yeah and um i guess you know well first of all i guess we should start how's business been going in 2024 so far well as an industry um we're, we're down so we're down about 30% year to date for park model RV shipments. So business has been a little bit tough. Um, we like to think it's it's more market driven based on possibly interest rates and then uh, filtering through some of the inventory we put out post COVID, which sounds funny to still talk about COVID, <laughs> but it did raise our inventories um, when we were able to get all of our units shipped. Um, but as an industry, we're on the park model side, we are a little bit slow this year. Uh, but we've got some new parks that are kicking up that um, should be able to change those numbers by the end of the year. So as an industry, we're looking forward to that. How did, uh, you know, COVID, did COVID change what the, what people are looking for in a park model RV? Or is it pretty much the same um, styles that you've been working with? I know home features are pretty popular, having like full size appliances and everything. Yeah, we and we have a couple different versions of our Athens Park and Shore Parks, but through COVID, uh, the camping in the RV industry grew mm -hmm. tremendously. So part of the reduction in our uh, year-to-date business was a little bit because we were we were fluffed up through uh, COVID times. Because let's let's be honest, a lot of people weren't going to hotels and out to communities and our I mean. Uh, you know, Disneyland and so forth. So they were camping. So our numbers yeah. were extremely strong during COVID. But generally, most of our units have full size appliances. We do have some hospitality side of our business for, say, the KOAs or some other folks out there in the marketplace that they don't require based on the way they rent their units to have full size. So we actually offer a little bit of both. Uh, okay. But from a feature standpoint, it's been pretty strong where um, the mid to high end is kind of where people are at. It's just a different time in the world right now. I think stuff's starting to level out a little bit post uh, COVID where people are traveling and doing the best they can uh, to get back into the RVing industry of which the RV industry as a whole uh, is getting stronger. It's just getting a little bit stronger right now on the towables, if you will, than mm -hmm. it is on the park model side. But we're, we're going to be able to to write that ship as soon as possible. That's our goal. We've got 16 plants building park models across the country and, and that's the direction we're going to go and stay the course. Yeah. What are, you know, when we're talking about rental units for park owners, um, I guess, what are park owners looking for in a rental unit? Are you seeing a lot of family, you know, units where they can have a large number of people in them, I guess? You know, our, our park models generally, can sleep four to six people. We have some that sleep up to 10. Okay. So it just depends on what type of community it's going to and what their market is, as opposed to what, what we build. Um, let's be clear. We have a 400 square foot box and there's only so much we yeah. can do into that box uh, from lofts to second bedrooms to bunk rooms. You know, the porches don't count for the square footage. So we do a lot of front and rear porches. So we've got a, uh, a glamping show coming up in October, and we've got a couple of really cool new floor plans that we're uh, almost completed developing now. So we're looking forward to that for sure. Has the glamping, I mean, you mentioned glamping, has that kind of really made people take a second look at the park model units as far as like adding those kind of higher end accommodations, I guess? It or is, but let's, you know, like say for example, the glamping, you know, when people go to Colorado, they want to, you know, be able to see and lots of windows and yeah. you're not, 
you're not doing really much, but maybe having your coffee on the front porch, looking at the mountains in this example, but they still like their feature comforts, creature comforts of home, which would be, you know, big showers, nice kitchens to be able to go out and uh, view the area and travel around and then come back to their home place, which would be the park model, whether they rent it or they buy it. So yeah, the glamping side of the business is strong because think about it. If you, if you live in, let's say Michigan, and you want to go to Colorado every year, sometimes pulling the fifth wheel isn't the most convenient scenario for that individual person. So they'll either lease or buy a park model and keep it out in the general area that they like to travel in. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's a pretty unique situation that park models have always been. Mm -hmm. um, but as an industry, we're doing a great job uh, developing and, and communicating to folks what we're for and we're temporary housing um, you know, we're not full-time living park models are built and manufactured for temporary housing. So it's an opportunity to go out and see our beautiful country and have an alternative to a bumper pool. I mean, I've seen a lot of devel new developments over the last three to four years, and quite a few of them are adding a lot of park models or cabins, um, to them, I guess, is that, are you guys still seeing a lot of development developments going on or has that kind of slowed down as well? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, with the cost of money where it is today, based on the, the where we are as a, a nation, mm -hmm. uh, the build of new communities from the ground up has been a little bit slow. But we also have some folks that have grown their existing communities and added spaces based on the necessity of the market. So a, yeah. a true greenfield, brand new, stick a shovel in the ground and build it, it has slowed down tremendously. But the other communities that either had um, pull through spaces, class A, whatever it may be, they're seeing a value in the park models as a whole so that people don't have to travel and drive to where they want to go. So for example, Colorado, Florida, California, Arizona, a lot of people will just fly and stay in a park model and then travel around that area. Um, so it's, it's been extremely nice. Um, we always like new communities coming in because we all get to build models and we get excited for a, you know, new, market share and all that. But you know, it, it's a everybody's being smart with their money right now, from a consumer to builders. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I know backlog times, um, you know, you know, right after COVID were pretty large uh, for some manufacturers, I guess, you know, what's that like now? Has that kind of settled down? And, um, you know, if a park owner were to order a unit, I guess, what's the turnaround time? Well, with 16 plants across the country, it varies, but I would tell yeah. you that generally within within five to seven weeks, we can have a unit delivered for most every one of our plants. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, what's the, you know, what's the range of costs for some of your units? I know you have a ton of units, so I, I imagine you have quite a range of what park owners can, and can buy, I guess. We do. And from a wholesale perspective, um, or retail, to be honest with you, you can go anywhere from the, the sixties all the way up to, to, you know, 180, 200,000 for a park model, just depending on like all real estate location and how many features and what you want actually in your park model. But generally we're, we're around, you know, the retail of a hundred to 140 is a, is pretty close to the main portion of our business. We do have some smaller parks that, you know, they need to bring in the, we'll call it the price sensitive park model. That way they just have an opportunity for the family of four or five to come in and spend a night at their community or park or campground. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything like new, exciting um, that's coming down the road? I mean, uh, like you mentioned, you only have a 400 square foot box, but you know, going to these shows regularly, you guys do quite a bit with 400 square feet. So we do, you know, to be able to put uh, 10 pounds of awesome in an eight pound bag is sometimes <laughs> tough, but we, we do the best we can. I will tell you that we've got a couple new models, as I mentioned, for the glamping show that as a company we're looking at bringing. And I think it'll be a, uh, a, a pretty interesting view of what you can do with the square footage and also incorporating your outside space from a porch perspective. Because think about yeah. it, if you go into a community, a park or a campground, you know, you may have the visuals that you want to look at out the back or the front or both. So we're trying to take that into account for what we're, we're bringing 
uh, to the glamping side of it going forward. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, inflation rates are obviously still a little bit higher than you'd probably like. I mean, interest rates. Sorry, I said inflate. Inflation's up, though, too. So I guess, uh, you know, looking forward, uh, do you expect more growth and uh, do you expect, you know, people to continue buying park models? I Personally and through our business, I do. Um, not because we're in it, but because of the way the market seems to fluctuate. And right now where we're at, we're down again as an industry for park models. But a lot of that is because we were so high during the we can't travel COVID time that now those numbers are kind of settling back out. But I, my opinion would be that we're, we're definitely not going to stay at a, a minus 30.9% year over year decline in the park model business. Um, yeah. I would say that, you know, in the best scenario, we make it could slip to 10 percent below where we were last year. And I think that'd be phenomenal. Yeah. Just based on where we are. So um, people can get in. People can kind of look at Champion Homes at uh, championhomes.com slash park model RV. You can kind of scroll through and you have a bunch of different tabs. Is there any other way people should be getting in touch to inquire about park models? Yeah, we you can go to Champion Park Model. Uh, cabins.com. You can go okay. to Champion Homes. You can go to Athens Park, Shore Park. You can look at one of my wonderful Woodall ads and call me direct. So there's a little plug for my great ads at Woodall's, <laughs> but you can reach us just about any way possible. My phone number, my direct number is on all of our ads and I answer calls. You'd be amazed all throughout the day and from all different parts of the country. Um, just because people want to learn a little bit more about what is a park model and why would that be an option? And that's our job to communicate knowledge to them so that they can make a good buying decision. Have you noticed like, a, you know, we've noticed a huge influx of new owners come in, maybe who haven't had experience in this industry. Do they always come with a lot of questions about park models? And, and I imagine they have questions about how they compare to housing, I guess, I would assume. Well, they do. And the biggest thing, again, is our, our units as an industry, park models are built for temporary housing. Yeah. So that's the biggest key we get over is we, we don't call them homes. They're park model RVs. So they're built yeah. for temporary use. And once we get through that and then we deal with the setup and, you know, which is extremely easy. And then we deal with where do you need your doors and windows and so forth based on whichever campground or community they're going in. It's a pretty smooth transition. But the biggest thing as an industry is we don't we don't call them tiny homes. And yeah. we don't call them houses. They're park model RVs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, John, uh, for coming on the show. And uh, thanks for sharing a little bit about Skyline Champion. And I hope things continue to go well for the company in 2024. Appreciate your time and look us up online. We'll be glad to help anywhere across the country.